Let's continue, hey everyone, let's continue with 5.2, um, the rules of probability. Um, so we're gonna look at a relative frequency distribution or table for US partnerships. Um, so partnerships are just like two companies working together. And then we're looking at their receipts. So how much um, they receive from sales and services. So under 25,000, right, 25 to 49,999 and so on. And these are their relative frequencies which we just recently learned relative frequency is the same as probability. And we're going to use um, the definition we just learned in the previous video. Um, if we have mutually exclusive events, we can just add the probabilities. And that's again because there's no overlap to worry about. So these events are mutually exclusive because each partnership would only fit in one category. Right, you sell in between this range or this range. You can't be in both. There's no way to have sales for 49,000 and 52,000. So each partnership would only fit in one group. In one row, right? Sales are either are in one of these ranges, not more than one. So that makes probabilities really easy. We just add. So under 100,000 just means we take all the categories under 100,000, which would be the first three rows. And we can just add them. So 0 0.601, because these are probabilities. 0 0.081 and 0 0.088, and that's it. Because there's no overlap, there's nothing tricky about this. When there is overlap, they get tricky. But for now, there's no overlap. We just add them and we get like a 0.77 chance which is 77%. All right, at least 500,000 means 500,000 or more. So there's 500,000 or more. So we just add the last two rows. Point, sorry, point zero three six plus point zero four one. right? We're adding the probabilities, those two. And we don't have to divide, right? Because relative frequency has already divided. So we're just adding. There's no total to worry about. Um, technically, the total's one, so everything's already out of one. So that's why we're not dividing. And in this case, we get 0, 077. All right, just a couple more. Under a million, so under a million would be all of these. Any, right, a million or more is F, so I would just add up all of the rows except for the last one. And I will show you a shortcut shortly. So add them all up except for the last row. So six zero one zero eight one. just check in 088, 153 and 036. I got 959. So 95% of them, almost 96, are under a million. A um, couple more. 500, uh, 50,000 or greater. So 50,000 is C or greater would be below. I'm going to shrink it just so we can see. So 088. One five three, oh three six, and oh four one. Right, they're mutually exclusive, so we can add them. And hopefully, we all get point three one eight. And I have a shortcut, which some of you may have thought of already, or not, but. For finding not probabilities, so the probability of not E for event, let's use A for just, A is kind of the common letter, not A would be the same as 1 minus the probability of A. Or the probability of A is 1 minus the probability of not A. And so this is a really nice rule when you're adding up more than half of the possibilities. So in example C, for under a million, 
Remember we were adding up all of these. Some of you may have noticed we could have just subtracted a million or more. So the probability of a million or more, or under a million, sorry. would be the same as one minus the probability of a million or more. Right, so this would be A and this would be not A, right? It's the opposite. So then we could have just done one minus 0.041, right? Visually, I think it makes sense, right? We added up all of these. Why couldn't I just do one minus that one? And if you do that, you should get 959 again. So it's a little bit faster than what we did in part C, but they both work. Your choice. All right, let's finish up page five. Yeah, and that's it for this section. So in general, um, the OR case is a little more complicated. So we just learned we can do P of A plus P of B. Um, but that's only for mutually exclusive. So in general, we have to take away the overlap. And the reason we have to take it away is because it gets double counted. So let's check out how that works. So I'm going to do A the old way, and then B will use this new formula. So we're going to roll two dice again, since we've done this before I made the table for you. So the probability of doubles or a sum is six. Um, I'm just gonna count rather than use a formula. Usually I count if it's easier. So doubles just mean like one and one is a double, two and two is a double, three and three is a double. So the diagonal is a double. When do you get the same thing? The same number on both of them. And then, or the sum is six. So I'll highlight all the sixes. And we'll just simply count, so don't worry about the formula. So there's 36 total. And we'll just count how many we highlighted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of 36 gives me two, seven, seven, eight. I just counted how many were doubles or a sum of six, just by simply highlighting. If I can count, I usually count, but let's say we can't and we use the formula. So the formula tells me I can find the probability of doubles and the probability of sum of six, but we have to take away the overlap, and I'll show you why as we do this. So I'm just copying this formula. A would be doubles, B is six, and then the and case. So doubles was my diagonal. How many were doubles? Six of them. And then we're gonna do a sum of six. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we can't just add because what happened is this six in the middle was counted for both of them. So it was counted two times when it should have only been counted once. So we take away that six, that's the overlap. So there's one out of 36 that was counted twice. We take that away and you'll notice we still get the same thing. We get six plus five minus one is 10 out of 36 and we get the same answer. So I usually count if I can. Counting is usually easier. So that was example A. Um, than the rules, um, but sometimes we just have to use the rules because counting just isn't an option. So it's good to have both tools and make that decision. Um, so for the final example, uh, let's just practice the formulas. Let's assume we don't have the info to count, so we'll just practice the formulas. So the formula tells me that the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the overlap. Again, right, we're minusing the overlap because it's double counted. So we're just going to straight plug in. This is just like a science class, right, where you plug in formulas. 
Um, so probability of A is 40%, so 0.4. B is 70%, 0.7. And then the overlap was counted twice. So the overlap was part of both of these numbers. So we're going to take it away because it was counted twice. So 0.4 plus 0.7 minus 0.3, and we get 0.8. A good way to check your work is if you didn't subtract the overlap and you do 0 0.4 plus 0 0.7, right? You get 1.1. And remember, probabilities are never bigger than 1. So that's a big hint that something's wrong. And so we take away the overlap and we get 0.8. So probabilities, again, are never bigger than 1. If they're bigger than 1, you're doing something wrong. All right, final example. So. We can use any letter, so instead of A or B, we'll do C or D. We'll be P of C plus P of D, and we'll take away the overlap. So I haven't really memorized the formulas as like P of A equals this. Um, it's just the or case is add the two events, take away the overlap. And then this one's tricky. We're actually going to solve, so we get to do a little bit of algebra practice. We're going to solve for P of D. So the or is one half equals p of c one third plus p of d and then minus the overlap of one tenth. Um, so I'm going to do LCD really fast just to review fractions. Um, I think they have, so they would all go into 30. So one half would be times 15 times 15 to make 30. Don't worry, we don't have to memorize this. Um, I'll show you how to do it on the calculator, but just a quick review. One third would be times 10 to make 30, and then times 10 would be times three. So we get 15 out of 30 is 10 out of 30 plus P of D minus three out of 30. So then we get 15 out of 30. We can combine these and get seven out of 30 plus P of D. And then just subtract, so P of D would be 15 out of 30 minus 7 out of 30. And then, which is 8 out of 30. And then here's a nice shortcut. Hit the math button, fraction. Oops, yeah, and it'll simplify it for you. So... I think I said 8 out of 30, which simplifies to 4 out of 15. And that's coming from the idea that we can divide them both by 2. And then even if we didn't find LCD, the calculator could have done it for you, which is nice. But I thought it would be nice to review LCD. Um, but if we didn't do LCD right, if I did 1 third minus 1 tenth, Enter, and then I don't know what that is, but you hit math, fraction, enter, and I got 7 out of 30, which is what I got. So if you haven't done fractions in a long time, the calculator will do it for you. But LCD is a good skill to have for other classes as well. So I'll see you back for section 5.3.